Good afternoon, my name is Ben Holcomb. I'm a senior lecturer here at UTS in the School of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering. This is a vibration lab and this video is about how to set up and properly use tripods for the purpose of making measurements with, for example, laser vibrometers or other types of uh, camera-based systems that need to be mounted securely on, on a tripod like this or, or like some of these over here. So the way I do this is that um, most tripods that you will work with have got a spirit level in the top um, and what we really want to do um, to be able to make use of this crank to move the, trans the sensor in a vertical orientation up and down is start by getting this spirit level, this bubble, in the middle here. So we can do that by adjusting the feet and as we move the feet around the smaller bubble will ultimately eventually find its way into the middle of that level. So approximately here. Now we know, because this is level and this is normal to the, the shaft, that when we use this crank to move the sensor up and down, that we are moving this up and down in a vertical direction. Okay, we can extend the length of the legs by undoing these crank, um, screws and we can obviously go you know, very, very high with, with this. Depending upon what you have mounted on here, you should take care when extending or making the, uh, the position of this very high because obviously if we've got a lot of mass up here and we're a long way off the ground, it's very easy for that to topple over. So think about that carefully. If we need to have a wider base, then we can use these screws to unscrew the legs and move them out um, so that they are now we've got a very stable base and similarly again we can set up the spirit level here to ensure that we're back to being in a vertical orientation on the back of the tripod you will see that there is a lock here and the lock is used to once we have the height nominally in the right position tighten everything up so that we eliminate any, uh, any slack around here and then we have a relatively stable platform to mount our sensor on and on top of every tripod we then have this kind of a device which allows us to on a, on a single degree of freedom by, by degree of freedom basis orient the, the sensor head by unscrewing these handles and rotating about a particular axis. Again, there are a couple of spirit levels here on two sides of this plate such that when we have um, got this set up, we can have this also level and we can close off those. So now, this, now, that, now that this is vertical and this is normal to this and also level, this one will allow us to rotate this and the pointing of the sensor, which might be a camera or a laser vibrometer, is now in a vertical plane. Okay? If we want to make a measurement and be able to move the laser beam or the camera pointing up and down, we can literally just undo this one and we can reorient it like so. Um, you will also notice, um, just back to the clamp, sorry, one thing to remember with the clamp is when this is clamped, we mustn't then start to try to adjust the vertical position here with this crank arm. This is very soft, this is anodized aluminium, but there's a brass grub screw in here and a rack and pinion system. If this is locked up and we try to crank this, we will damage the, um, we will damage the rack and pinion gear drive and we will effectively write off the tripod. And here's an example of one that had that kind of thing happened to it previously and you can see that this tripod basically is very difficult to make use of without applying, without actually lifting the head up and here you can see the nature of the damage on that shaft and there's even bits of metal falling out of it right now as I move it up and down. How long have I been talking please? Four minutes and a half. Four minutes and a half? Yeah. I'll keep going just briefly. The last thing to show with this tripod is um, that there is a separate plate which would be mounted to our camera head. Now in this case it's a hexagonal plate, it's missing at the moment because it's on the sensor head somewhere else. The plate essentially will slot in here, will collapse down or sit flat and push this pin which 
allows this crank, this cam to rotate and then that is locked and means that the device cannot fall off the tripod or get knocked off inadvertently and that's very important to make use of that correctly. If we want to take the device off the tripod we push this lever here, this button here on this side I'll bring it around, we push this button here undo this one and then this little brass pin pops up and keeps this, like prevents this from closing. So now you can remove the plate. Here's an example of that, that's a slightly um, more straightforward example. Um, and here's the plate. You can see that it's got a wedge shape to it, so it slots in there, pushed down, and this arm throws around, job done. Here's a different type of tripod, slightly less complex tripod, similar principle. We've got a crank here, we can move this one up and down without a drive, a gear drive. We've got one degree of freedom of rotation. We can extend the legs a little bit and so on. And last, last example of a tripod that I'll show you is this one, which we have two of. These are also very nice tripods, Manfrotto tripods. This, again, two to command from the legs. These buttons can be pushed in to allow the leg to come out further. So we get a more stable base and there are several positions, you can hear them cranking as they go back in. Again, a clamp here. The beauty of this tripod is that you can lift this up all the way to the top and then push the button underneath. This all then comes out of the top, this one folds over and can be pushed back through like this. Tighten this one back up and then we can now mount, for example, over the centre line, obviously taking care that if we have a lot of mass on the end of here, we have to be careful that it's still stable, okay, that we don't over, over rotate or make it unstable and it falls over and damages the instrument. Okay, but those are quite nice for lightweight devices where we want to make a measurement, for example, directly over a sample which might be on the floor. Okay, so that's an overview of tripods that we have in Vibration Lab, how to use them, how to set them up safely and look after them so that they're there for the rest of people to enjoy the use of in the future. Thank you.